Hi, I'm Hayley and I'm sitting here in the corner of my room that I just like moved the bookshelf from to talk to you about some of the books that I've been reading. Um, this is me trying to procrastinate from cleaning the rest of my room. So I've just, everything's in a pile over there and I'm literally just sitting here like, let's hope this works. <laughs> Sorry for my appearance. My face is a bit dry and uh, rashy, so I've got like stuff on it to try and help it. So I'm not looking 100%. Let's just get into it. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the few books that I've finished and read throughout September and the month before that. Simply because I don't have physic like all of the physical books and I mostly like read audiobooks lately. Because my attention span is not there and I just want to sleep all the time. Ooh. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm going to first start off with the September. It was the Bratz Readathon, so I participated in a Yellow Book Escape and the Bratz Readathon as well. Yellow Book Escape, I do have a separate like vlog video of that, so I'm not going to talk about them here, but I am going to talk about some of the books that I read amongst that, and also for the Bratz Readathon, because I was too lazy to make a full vlog of itself for the Bratz Readathon. So for those of you who wanted to know, I ended up doing the Bright's Readathon for Sasha. Um, I originally was going to do Jade because I did have um, more of her prompts that I had already started. So I am just going to talk about some of the like the books that I ended up finishing and actually reading. Yeah, I'm still pottering through um, the complete Sherlock Holmes collection. I've read like two of the short stories since then and I'm very close to finishing so I just wanted to give that a shout out and say that I'm very close to finishing this now. Um, by very close I mean I'm fucking halfway of this huge tome so <laughs> close enough but not so not close at all. I've been listening to that on audiobook mostly and I'm currently really enjoying it but every time I like stop and then go back to it I like forget how much I enjoy it and then when I start reading it again I'm like oh that's right, I love this type of shit. <laughs> I think overall, like once I finish it all, I can like safe to say that I enjoy Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's content when it comes to the Sherlock Holmes world. So that's good. <laughs> I am gonna talk about for the um, Bright's Readathon, they did have like a reading cha a challenge that required you to read one of the, the books, like everyone read one book the same, and that was The Henna Wars. Um, this one, The Hen on Wars, what can I say about this? Um, it was gay, and it made me feel really cute and happy. I have not read any, like, tr like high school stories about a gay character, and it just made me feel so, like, giggly and happy because it was something that I could relate to, you know, having a really big crush on a girl and not knowing how to, um, express that. Um, I think there was more texture behind it because they're also talking about henna and the cultural influence um, connects generations to generation through that and I thought it was an interesting layer just culture that me, myself and I have not experienced on a personal level. Um, it was just very cute and it gave me a new perspective on coming out in an environment that isn't similar to mine. I'm going to talk about, yet again, Australian heritage, Australian culture. Um, I read the first two books in the Tomorrow When the World Began series by John Marsden. So we got Tomorrow When the World Began and The Dead of the Night. The Dead of the Night was my favourite book growing up. Um, I read this series, the first book I actually read for my year six. Um, like, in my end of primary school, it was one of the last books that I read with my teacher. Actually, no, it was year five that I read this, sorry, so that's incorrect. Year five, read this. <laughs> and then I ended up continuing with the whole series. So there is seven books in the series, and I have the others out in the lounge room. And these two, I just, it gives me wholesome vibes. Like, I watched the movie adaptation to this, and the movie, although different, it is actually very similar, and I'm very upset that they didn't get a chance to make a second, because I would have loved to see things develop more in this. Reading it from a different perspective as an adult, it just hits differently now. Um, this, I don't know what to like say about this. This is something that is just so like childhood for me. Um, I ended up reading, well, listening to Dear Evan Hansen while I was at work. 
I've listened to the like full musical soundtrack over and over again on repeat while I'm at work. This time I was like, I'm actually gonna like read the book. So I did. And I really hope that they make the movie version that they've been discussing very similar to the book format. I think making Connor a... sorry if this is spoilers or something, but I think it just adds so much texture to the musical that I think it's important to talk about. That Connor is actually a gay character. I think it adds so much more texture um, to the original like the original Broadway musical version. I don't, I'm not 100% sure which one came first. I'm pretty sure it was the musical that came first and then the book just explored more into that. Um, and I honestly think it's gonna be really interesting to see if they actually mention that or make that a big point, plot point in the movie productions. But in my opinion, I just, it hits different. It, it makes me feel so many things. I think in the book, I was more aware of Evan's age and it made me feel a bit more sympathetic for him because of the um, actions and decisions that he makes. But yeah, no, I really enjoyed the movie, ver I mean the book version of this musical and I still listen to this musical over and over again. The next book I am actually going to talk about I also really really enjoyed and that I'm very late to this like train of loving this stalking Jack the Ripper. What can I say about this book? Very like historical fiction vibes, which I personally love anything set back in the day. I'm able to like transport my brain to a different time. Um, the fact that this bitch is out of here like working in morgues and like being proper scientist vibes, trying to catch a killer, like oh so cool. And then like plot twist at the end when we go, oh shit, oh shit. It's just, <laughs> I had a lot of my favorite things in it. It's good. I recommend. I'm really bad at this. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but also like I'm not sorry at all. Um, this next book, I just I keep looking at my phone to see what fucking books I've read and what I haven't read. Okay, oh this next one was one that I dented up. I think I like just watched one person's vlog of hauling this book and I was like, I need to read it ASAP. It looks so good. And they recommended the audiobook, so I was like, oh no, guess what I'm doing? Reading the audiobook now. Um, it's The Night Swim. I listened to the audiobook of Night Swim, and bitch, it is so good. <laughs> so it's a thriller. I think that's what you would have... Yeah, it's categorized as a thriller. And it's got two different sort of... Not story... Yeah, two different storylines that it follows. So it's all from one perspective. But it's the female, the female like perspective. She runs a podcast, and in one side, she talk in the podcast, she's talking about about a court case about a sexual assault and rape victim. Um, like the whole podcast as a whole, she's trying to crack unsolved cases, and it's kind of like a big thing that she's now going to be following a real time case that is going on in the court. So she's in this small town, doing following through with. Interview, not inter well, interviewing a few people and talking about this court case, whilst also she is receiving some letters from this individual that she has no idea about. They're, she's actually kind of being stalked a bit by this person, and you're both like on edge, wanting to find out about how this court case is going to go, and getting very angry and upset over particular things that are coming up and that are being exposed. And then on the opposite side, yet again, you're being um, led, you, like, you're kind of being led on this story. Makes me feel both incredibly uncomfortable, but also, it, it, like, it's real. Like, um, this trigger warning, this does deal with largely about sexual assault and also rape culture. And I was read, listening to this while I'm at work and I ride home at night from work. So, me riding my bike in the middle of the night, like it's like 12 o'clock and I'm like pedaling along in like a dark alleyway and I was like, fuck, this scares the shit out of me because it just made me very aware about how women at any point of their life could easily be attacked like that and that just made me like, fuck, 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 fuck. But fuck me, that book made me, I both was like, this is such a good book, and also made me like, this is, scares me a little bit, not gonna lie. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna go to my library. 
one memorable book that I hired from my library that I did hire in an ebook ages ago that I never read. So I decided to hire the audiobook because it became available. And that audiobook is Tattooist of Auschwitz. Now this is not something that I can like actively talk about in a happy and encouraging way. I don't necessarily recommend this book to someone who's going through struggles and who mentally isn't prepared to read something like this because I personally struggled. I had to stop and put it down and read something a little bit more light and fluffy so I did end up reading The Henna Wars in between reading The Tattoos of Auschwitz. I didn't cry during The Tattoos of Auschwitz which is kind of surprising because it is a very emotionally driven book but I honestly just felt so drained and dread. Like I just felt so heavy while reading this book and that's why I don't recommend it for everyone because it definitely takes some sort of like willpower in order to really digest things. I think if I was physically reading it I would have to stop and not pick it up again but because I was listening to it, it I was able to sort of digest it a bit easier. Um, it is something that like I started reading knowing it was going to be heavy, like I didn't think that I was going to be like sunshines and rainbows. It is a book talking about an individual's experience while being in a concentration camp and being the tattooist of Auschwitz and other surrounding concentration camps. Um, it is about a young man who his position of being um, the tattooer, he is able to sneak goods in back and forth from the other camp, from other camps as he's like traveling between the two to continue tattooing people, more arrivals. Um, oh, it was heavy. It was very draining. So yeah, the, those were the books that I mostly read in September. I think, um, what am I forgetting? I'm forgetting one. I know I am. Oh, I read... The I read some e-comic books, like online comic books, and I read the, what is it called? The Fabulous Lives of the, what is it freaking called? Something Killjoys. It was Gerard's Way, one of Gerard's Way's like first comics that he had written. And it was the, it's the full comic and it's based off the Danger Days album from uh, My Chemical Romance. Yeah, that's it. I can't remember what it was called, something... But yeah, I read that and I really liked it. I thought it was good. Um, I think comic books are just so much fun. Even like plot wise when I'm not like completely enthralled or I'm not like this isn't the best thing I've ever read. I think it's hard to not like something because the artwork is so pretty. So I may not like the storyline but the artwork is so nice. Um, in this case, I did actually like the storyline. I think the world itself is very intriguing and interesting. <sighs> this just made me bummed out because, like, reading that comic really just made me kind of sad because I was supposed to be seeing my Comic this year um, at Download Festival and because obviously COVID stuff happened, things got cancelled, so I couldn't. I don't think I have any other books to talk about because although it like, has been a while and I'm like, I didn't actually read a lot of books. Like, I did, but I didn't. You get me? Like... <laughs> Thank you for watching me rant about books that I recently read. Um, I'm not feeling 100%, so, I, you know, it's one of those things where, like, you just got to get out of the way and done. So, um, thank you for watching. <laughs>